Question four, part C. Don't be fooled here. There's actually a question here. You can see there's two marks here for completing the table by adding the initial rates in the boxes. Now, it's always really useful in these questions to do two things. The first thing is to make everything relative to the numbers in the top row. So if we treat this as being uh, relative to that number, it will be a 1, a 1, a 1, and this would be a 1. This one is three times as big, this one stayed the same, and this one has also stayed the same. So when we want to work out the initial rate, we need to look back to our orders, that's the second thing we need to do, and we realise that it is proportional to the iodide squared. So we've tripled the iodide concentration, so what we need in here is to triple this, so we're going to need to make it nine times as big, so that's 0 0.6 times three squared, which is 0 0.6 times three squared is 5.4 and we'll give the same degree of precision that we've been given in the question at 5.40. Now in this next one here we've gone four times as much as the first row for iodide, four times as much there and again four times as much in this case. So we need to look at this reaction. We've got, to, we've got an overall, everything's been quadrupled uh, so we can either think about that in terms of, well, it's a fifth order reaction, so we need to increase everything by 4 to the power 5, or we can just think about we're going to multiply everything. Uh, this would be 4 squared, this would be 4 squared, uh, sorry, this would be 4, and this would be 4 squared. So we're multiplying by 4 squared, 4, and then 4 squared, which is the same as multiplying by 4 to the 5. Now 4 to the power 5 is 1,024, so this needs to be 1,024 times that rate. So if we times that, in, multiply that through, we're going to get 614, so we need to do 0.6 times 1,024, which is going to give us 614.40 for our initial rate. Now we need to calculate the rate constant for this, so again we keep in mind what our rate equation was. We can rearrange that to give the k value, it's just going to be the rate divided by I minus squared IO3 minus and H plus or squared. Now it's a good idea, you could use any of the rows of this table and you should get the same answer, but as they've given you all the data in the first row, it's good to use that just in case you made a mistake with either of these two calculations. And so if we plug our numbers into that, we go on to find that our rate should be this number here, so 6 and then now the difficulty is this is a pretty inelegant way of presenting the number and we're asked to give it to two significant figures so by far the best way of doing this is actually to represent it in standard form and you can switch to standard form in your calculator at which point this becomes quite a nice 6.6666 etc times 10 to the power 8 and that can then be written to two significant figures as just 6.7 times 10 to the power 8 and much easier to work in standard form two significant figures now in terms of the units for this we've got here is the rate which is in moles per decimeter cube per second as we've been told here and we've essentially got five concentrations multiplied together on the bottom so we're going to have moles per decimeter cubed raised to the power five which if we write it down is essentially going to cancel with one of these moles per decimeter cubed and that's going to be the four so don't forget the per second but now we need to do one divided by mole to the four which is mole to the minus 4, 1 divided by mole to the minus 12, or dm to the 12, uh, sorry, dm to the minus 12, which is dm to the 12. And so we can write that as decimeters to the 12, mole to the minus 4, seconds to the minus 1. So there is our value for k. And the final part of this question is saying that the student is repeating it using this time to methanoic acid instead of the equivalent concentration of HCl. So it's very much a similar reaction to experiment one, but this time 
we're going to have a lower concentration of H+, plus, and that's what actually determines the rate of the reaction. It's the H+, plus because this is actually a weak acid, and we know that because the pKa is bigger than zero. So to determine the initial rate in the experiment, what we're going to do is need to work out what that concentration of H+, plus actually is. That's our goal. And so the first thing we can do is remember that the Ka of an acid, if we've got a weak acid, is H plus times, in this case, as it's methanoic acid, we need the conjugate base of that acid, which is HCOO minus, divided by HCOOH. Now, if we have a weak acid dissociating, according to this equation, so COOH, dissociating to give H plus and HCOO minus, then if that's the only thing that's around, then we're going to have the equal concentration of HCOO minus as H plus. And so we can write that as H plus squared over HCOOH. Now, remember that this is the concentration of the undissociated acid at equilibrium. But actually, because it's a weak acid and the, the percentage of dissociation is very small, we can actually write that as the initial concentration that we used. So I'm putting it approximately equal to, because it is only approximately equal. Now we can rearrange this expression here to give us H plus is equal, approximately equal to the square root of Ka times HCOOH, all to the zero. Now we need to work out what the actual Ka of this acid is, and we can say that that is just using this equation here, with Ka is 10 to the minus pKa, because remember the pKa is the minus the log of base 10 of Ka. And so when we work that through, we find that the Ka of the acid is 1.78 times 10 to the minus 4 moles decimeter cubed, and then that gives us an H plus concentration when we plug the numbers in with the concentration here of 0.02, of 1.89 times 10 to the minus 3 moles per decimeter cubed. And of course, we're keeping these numbers on our calculator as a three significant figure value so that we can use them in the subsequent calculations. And now, to work out the initial rate, we just need to look at the rate equation. Again, we get our k value, which we got from our previous set as 6.7 times 10 to the 8. Um, we can use an unrounded or a rounded value here. It doesn't actually matter as far as the mark scheme is concerned. It's better to go back to get that original number when you get to this stage in the calculation. And then we need to multiply that by I minus squared. It's the same as experiment 1, so that would be 0 0.015 squared. We need to have iodate to the power 1. We've got 0 0.01 moles of iodate. And we've got this time 1.89 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of, uh, sorry, mole per decimeter cubed of H plus. And so when we work that through, we find out that our initial rate should be 5.33 times 10 to the minus 3 mole per decimeter cubed per second.